Next up, let's talk about JSON APIs. In modern web application development, you usually, let's say, have some parts of your application which are dynamically fetched or dynamically processed from the front end. And usually in the modern web development era, these kinds of data are represented as JSON data, which comes from the server and which is fetched from the client via some event or some automatic system. And to do that in CakePHP, we have a JSON view, which is responsible from the MVC uh, schema to render the data from the controller as a JSON. So now what do we have to do to make a JSON endpoint or a JSON yeah, URL to uh, fetch data from our database and represent it as JSON? First of all, we need to add this few classes method to our controller. So we can either set it in our app controller to allow it in every controller, but let's just say, okay, now we go into our application and just say, okay, um, go into a blog post controller because that one is pretty simple. And let's just say few classes. So this is just a copy pasted version of this. And as you can see in here, we now define which kind of um, response structures or response types we want to support in our controller. And first of all, I'll just use the JSON view here, but later on we can also use XML as well. But let's just stick with the JSON view so we can copy paste that JSON view uh, in here, as you see we need a return type array. So this needs to be an array of supported um, few classes, but also we need to import the class as well at the top of our application so that PHP knows which uh, kind of class that is. So, okay, now we added support for the JSON view to our blog post controller. Um, so let's just try if something happens uh, when we go to our application, to our blog posts. Well, okay, so the usual blog posts or other controller actions work as normal, so nothing really special happened here. Um, some may probably try to type at the end of the URL the .json uh, extension, but nothing is happening here as well. So, okay, let's just go back to the documentation and see what we have to do now. Um, well, first of all, um, we need to set that uh, the data inside of our method, of our, our controller method, needs to be serialized so that the JSON view knows which type or which kind of data needs to be present inside the JSON. So this has to be done via calling this this view builder set option to serialize the here the articles um, variable. But in our case, if we go into our index method, it is not the articles variable, it's the block posts variable that we want to serialize for our, for our index um, controller action. So, okay, sure. Um, but we're still missing something and that, that is explained here at the top and editing data views in your application. Um, because the, the base setup for CakePHP requires that the client adds an accept header to the HTTP request. So by default, when you browse a URL in your browser, uh, no such accept HTTP header is set, but you will have to use something like Postman, which is this application here, or maybe if you want to uh, curl or some CLI tool to make an HTTP request, uh, which adds this HTTP header. So here I'll just go to localhost to my port slash blog posts. And now if we go into our headers, we can see these are all the automatically generated headers by Postman, but there is also an accept header, which can be configured to use application slash JSON. And when we now, uh, I wrote it into the wrong field. Uh, this is um, test. Uh, if we now send that request, we can see here now that we are getting uh, valid JSON 
uh, returned from our server, which contains all of our blog posts. So these are uh, all the same six entries, which we can see here, but still our HTML response from the browser still works the same, even though it is the same URL. And this is the main thing I want to talk here about is because the HTTP header here actually defines what CakePHP response in, in this case. But maybe as said before, you also want a JSON response to be uh, returned in your browser when you just type .json here as well. And this is what is explained here with the route file extensions because in the routes, as we know from previous videos, the routes are the glue between our request and what the request gets connected to our controller. And so if we add this set extensions method to our routes, we tell the router that these, uh, all these connected controller routes also support JSON and XML. Um, extensions or route uh, endpoints as well. So if we now go back to our application, go into our config roots.php, here we are inside of our return static function. We have our scope for our root uh, URL. And in here where we also have our fallbacks configured, I'll just add it here um, before our builder connect pages. This needs to be builder and not root. Uh, so now we added JSON and XML support inside of our router. We've set the few classes inside of our controller to be supported as JSON view. And we said that the blog posts variable is needed to be serialized whenever we are calling the index action. So now if we go back to our blog posts.json URL, we can now see the same um, JSON result as we can see in Postman, even though we uh, are not setting that except header. So these are the two main, I would say, uh, decisions which you need, or the, the, the two main parts uh, which you uh, have available to you to decide on how to render or mm, work with JSON. Uh, in CakePHP, um, but maybe you also say, okay, sure, um, there's a whole lot of magic happening in this view builder set option serialize part and whatever, because um, you don't really know what is happening in the template. So if we go into our templates, you can see here in our blog posts index, we still have normal HTML here, but this HTML is not returned inside of our JSON responses because, well, it's just a JSON response. Um, so what if you want to have more control over what is returned actually in your JSON? Well, this is also explained a little bit down here. Using a data view with template files, uh, if you for some reason don't want to use the JSON uh, auto-rendering part of CakePHP, you don't need to set the serialized part here. So let's just comments that out. And now we can create a view file as usual, as we normally do for the HTML responses as well. But we just need to add a extra folder for the JSON view, as you can see here. So again, we are here in the blog posts controller in the index method. So we go into templates, blog posts, but now JSON and say index php and in here we can just say okay here it just unsets some um, some field from the blog post we can also do that if we want to um, let's just copy paste that line at the top here as well so we have nice auto completion here as well uh, blog posts as blog posts and let's just unset the what's what do we have inside of our uh, let's just unset the modified attribute uh, so blog posts so we return or we echo here now our JSON encoded adjusted 
blog posts um, array. And now if we go back and go into here, as you can see, we now don't have the modified um, property inside of our blog posts entities or here it is just a simple JSON element as well. So, okay. So you now know that you can also skip the whole serialized part of CakePHP and um, have full control over what is being returned inside of your JSON endpoints. Um, but the one thing I also wanted to mention here, and this is outlined here with the green mark here, that this kind of few classes mapping or few classes uh, optional adding uh, to your controllers is only available since CakePHP 4.4. If you are not on CakePHP 4.4, uh, you will need to use the request handler component, which is a normal CakePHP component, uh, which is responsible for all the connecting uh, the HTML or the, the HTTP except header part, which we uh, used before. But you still need to serialize all your uh, variables as usual, as you've seen here. It's just that instead of the few classes part, you'll need to use the request handler component. But yeah, I'll hope you now understand a bit more how this whole uh, API and JSON um, handling in CakePHP works. Um, if you need a little bit more elaborate or complicated setup for um, RESTful APIs in CakePHP, I would definitely recommend you look into this Mixer API REST uh, demo application and uh, the uh, application skeleton, which was provided by, I'll always have to look up, the Sneed Sardini uh, user. He's definitely uh, done a lot in the CakePHP community and I will definitely recommend that you look into that if you want to do something very API focused in your application. But yeah, still, I'll hope you now understand the differences between our usual HTML responses, which we've talked about previously only, and that you can also do uh, pure JSON um, responses here as well, whatever you're trying to build with your application. So I hope you learned something, you know what to do, and I will see you in the next one.